Bike packing is all the rage right now. It seems like everybody on social media is doing it. So if you need a bike to go bike packing, then this brand new Canyon Grail AL could be a really good choice if you're on a budget. As well as bike packing, it's well suited to gravel racing, adventure riding, touring, commuting, and just general road and off-road riding. Now it's based on the Canyon Grail launched last year by a German company, but it switches from the funky handlebar to a conventional stem and handlebar and switches from carbon to aluminium, which both help keep the price down. This bike with Shimano 105 costs 1,350 pounds. You get the same frame and fork with a Tiagra group set for just over a thousand pounds, or spend a bit more and get a SRAM rival one by group set. Depends on where you sit on the whole one by versus two by debate. Now, it's a really good looking bike. It also seems to match my jacket quite nicely as well. But let me run you through some of the things I like and dislike about this bike. And I'll also give you my first ride impressions as well. The most obvious difference from the Carbon Grail launch last year is that there's no hover handlebar. They switched to a regular handlebar and stem, both made from aluminium. It looks better in my book and it's easier to adjust. You can adjust the reach and the stack much more easily. Got a very short stubby stem and a wide flared drop handlebar. This short stem gives the bike really fast steering, really agile and nimble in the trees. When you're riding mountain bike single track, you can twist it and turn it through the trees really nicely and it just turns really quickly. Really enjoyable and fun bike to ride. And then for ensuring maximum control on fast gravel surfaces or steep descents, you've got a slightly flared drop handlebar. It's only a slight flare, it's not as extreme as some, but you are effectively wider in the drops than you are in the hoods. Gives you a bit more control when you're batting along a fast gravel surface with the tires squirming around or descending a very steep pitch gradient, gives you a bit more control. And that in combination with a short stem gives you loads of control, makes the bike easy to maneuver at high speed, at low speed, and it makes it really good fun to ride as well. But if you're thinking that the short stem means a short and cramped fit on a bike, don't worry, because Canyon has stretched out a top tube. So it's a longer top tube than a normal road bike. And that in combination with a short stem means you get the nice reach you want from a bike like this. I didn't feel cramped or squash up on the bike. I had a nice reach from the saddle to the hoods and the drops on the bike, but the short stem keeps the handling agile and nimble. It's a really fun setup. It's an idea borrowed from mountain bikes which have longer top tubes and short stems. So you get the nice reach you want, but you have the short stem for maximizing the handling benefits of this sort of setup. As I mentioned earlier, this bike spec with a Shimano 105 group set, so it means mechanical gear changes and hydraulic disc brakes. The disc brakes are really good, really powerful, a nice light lever action, and the gears are also light and easy to shift as well. The really good group set, probably the best group set that Shimano makes, balancing that price and performance ratio really nicely. Now you get a compact 5034 chain set and a wide range 1134 cassette, which gives you a reasonable spread of gears for dealing with steep climbs and steep descents. Personally though, I prefer a subcompact chain set just to lower the gears even more, which would help you in that really steep off-road terrain, especially if you're putting frame packs and seat packs on the bike and adding weight to the bike, that's where lower gears would be nice. But Shimano doesn't yet offer a subcompact chain set. I don't know if it will in the future. I'd like to see Shimano offer a more gravel focused group set. There are a few other brands like Praxis and so on offering subcompact chain sets and some brands are specking those, but for now we're stuck with a road-based uh, 5034 compact, which is a shame, but generally it works pretty well. But it's the one thing I would change if I was being fussy with this bike. I really like the Schwabi G1 tires and not just because of the tan sidewall, which I think looks really good with the olive green frame, but because they provide a really good blend of performance on and off road. So this low profile dimple tread pattern provides good rolling resistance on the road, not too draggy, not too slow. Put about 45 PSI in the tires for road use and they roll along nice and fast. And you can do a road ride for a couple of hours and not really have any complaints. Get off road, let the pressure down to say 35 and they provide really good grip. And they dealt with most things I put them through. So soft grass, uh, boggy sections, nice loamy single track, they provide really good grip, nice cornering traction as well. 
They might get bogged down in really deep mud, but they're not really a mud tire. But for the most part, they dealt with conditions pretty well. And they provide that good balance or compromise of uh, road and off-road uh, grip, traction and roll resistance. As for long-term durability of these sidewalls, well, I can't comment to be honest. I need now six months on the bike to let you know how these sidewalls stack up. But for the last few weeks I've had it, they've been staying clean and they look really, really good. Did I say that already? Now the reason I've turned the bike upside down is to show you this, a third additional bottle cage mount. So you get one on the down tube and a seat tube as normal. But if you're going bike packing and putting a frame pack on, you might lose that ability to use one or both of those bottle cages. So a third one on a down tube gives you an extra option. You can use it as well as or instead of those bottle cage mounts there. You put a water bottle there or a tool keg there and it's just a really nice addition. Something we're seeing on a lot of gravel bikes gives you more versatility for long rides, bike packing, adventure, touring and so on. So nice little detail down there. And also while I'm down here, if you can see it, these really nice graphics sort of give it a nice fade into the Canyon logo. I like that. Understated, but pretty cool. In general, it's a really nice looking and well-designed aluminum frame. I particularly like the shape of the down tube and you get a full internal cable and hose routing to stop the mud from clogging the cables. And you've also got a full carbon fork also with internal hose routing. So disc brakes, as you'd expect, with through axles and flat mount calipers, all fairly standard. As I mentioned, you've got an extra boss cage on a down tube for bike packing duties. But as well as bike packing, it's also a really good commuting option because you have a full set of mudguard mounts, nicely hidden on the inside of the stays and a fork, and you even have rack mounts as well. Not something we see that often on adventure and gravel bikes, but you do it on this bike. So you can easily fit a rack and some panniers, and from Monday to Friday, you can use it for a commuting bike. You can even change the tires and fit some mudguards and just have a fast winter touring commuting option. And then for the weekend, put the knobs back on and go bike packing and have a whirl of a time. So a really versatile option. And that's why these bikes are appealing because they are versatile. But, well, two buts actually. As nice as the frame is, there are two issues I have with it. The first is the quality of the welds. Not the smoothest, not the prettiest. I've seen much better welds on other aluminum bikes. Maybe it's what you expect at this price point, but I don't think we should be expecting it in 2019. I like to see Canyon up its weld quality, even on a bike at this price point. The second is probably a bigger issue for a lot of people, and it is the press fit bottom bracket. Now for world tour bikes where performance is the main focus, a press fit bottom bracket is fine. It allows all the tubes around it to be even bigger profile for maximum power transfer. But for a bike like this designed for reliability and easy maintenance for bike packing in the middle of nowhere, daily commuting where you're really gonna put it through the grinder, a press fit bottom bracket probably isn't the smartest option. And I think an external threaded bottom bracket would have won a few more fans on this bike. I know a few commenters have said that the press fit bottom bracket has put them off buying a bike. So that is quite a consideration. Now you might be fine with a press fit, you might run it for a year and not have any problems at all, but I know there are lots of people who've had history with press fit bottom brackets creaking and groaning. So that's a bit of a contentious one that, but let me know what you think about press fit versus external threaded bottom brackets in the comment section below. So those are my likes and dislikes with the new Canyon Grey AL. A mixed bag, but mostly uh, positive ones. Let me know what you think of my likes and dislikes in the comment section below and whether you agree with some of the points I've raised about this bike. Now it's time to tell you what it's like to ride and what the performance and handling is like. So I've been riding it for the last few weeks here on my local Cotswold roads and off-road trails. And the first thing to say is it's really good fun to ride. One of the most fun bikes I've had to ride for the last few months. That short stem and the wire flared handlebar gives the bike great agility, really nimble. So when you're riding off-road through the trees in a single track, it's just a really responsive bike, really easy to turn, really maneuverable. And that makes it a really good fun bike to ride. It really puts a smile on your face and it really just gives you maximum control when you're riding on tricky terrain, which is where the bike really shines. Whether it's in the woods or on the gravel tracks of Salisbury Plain or somewhere else, it's a really easy, agile and fun bike to ride. And I like the concept of a long top tube with a short stem. So you have to fit, so it's not cramped, you have nice comfort for long rides, but you have that agile steering. It probably takes a bit of getting used to if you're coming from a traditional road bike with a longer stem, because steering is a bit faster, but it's not twitchy. You've got a nice amount of stability. You've also got a really long wheelbase and a slack head angle. And those two features combined with that wide handlebar to give you a really stable planted ride when you're on fast, loose gravel or really steep descent. The bike is really planted and it won't sketch around too much on loose surfaces. And it's, you know, I don't want to say confidence inspiring because that's an overused term by bike testers, but it does give you a reasonable amount of confidence on really tricky terrain. And it makes up for the fact you have a drop handlebar 
and you don't have a drop pace and all you have a mountain bike things that would make riding off-road easier it makes riding a road bike basically as easy as it is to ride off-road where you might expect a mountain bike to be the more obvious choice with an aluminium frame and a shimano 105 group set it's never going to be the lightest bike but i really never felt the weight become an issue on any terrain on road off road or no matter how steep the gradients were as i mentioned i prefer a subcompact chain set just for giving a bit more capacity when you're loading the bike up with frame packs and seat packs and so on you don't really need the high end on a bike like this you can go fast on it on a road but when you're riding off-road, the speed's a lot lower, the terrain is usually a lot steeper and varies a lot more than on the road. And a lower focus group set would be my preference for this sort of bike. And it's not a complaint level just at Canyon. Most gravel bikes I've ridden, unless they're one by, have a compact chain set from Shimano, because that's all Shimano offers. And they also have the same issue, just being slightly held back on really steep terrain when you've got a bike laden with frame packs and so on. As a package, it all comes together really well. Got a nice, stiff, lightweight and responsive aluminum frame. Big cushioning, grippy 40mm tyres with good rolling resistance on the road. Rock solid reliability from the Shimano 105 group set with reasonably wide range that could be a little bit lower. Got a really nippy handling from that short stem and a wide flared drop handlebar. And the disc brakes give you loads of extra reassurance when you're riding down steep terrain or you're loading a bike and you need the extra stopping power. And the geometry really comes together off-road as well. Slacker front end and a longer wheelbase gives you extra stability, makes it more planted. But you still have that short stem to make sure it's nice and nippy and nimble. And for the most part, it's a really good fun bike to ride. I had a lot of fun riding this on my local roads and trails, on-road and off-road. Probably one of the standout bikes for the last few months. So yeah, good work, Canyon. Really uh, done a good job with the Canyon Grail AL. And then to top it all off, it's great value for money. £1,350 or even less if you go for Tiagra, which is still a really good group set. So if you're looking to get into bike packing, adventure, racing, gravel riding, whatever you want to call it, this is a really good solid option. And the money you save from not buying a more expensive carbon bike means you can invest in a frame pack, seat pack and other things you need to go bike packing and gravel riding and so on. So yeah, it's a really good bike. I really enjoy riding it and I recommend it. So if you're looking for a bike this year, this is one you should put on your shortlist. So in summary, if you're looking for a gravel racing bike, adventure, bikepacking, commuting, touring, general larking about and having fun and a bit of road and off-road riding, the Canyon Grail AL is a really easy bike to recommend. It's great value for money. There's a few small niggles to respect, but I can live with them. It's really versatile, really capable, really good fun as well, and it looks really good. So it gets my thumbs up, an easy bike to recommend if you're in the market for this style of bike this year. But that's all for now. I hope you enjoy watching the video. Make sure you hit that like button if you did enjoy watching it and hit the subscribe button as well. And I'll see you all again next time. Thank you for watching.